So there was a potential giant ant found, and giant is a relative term. This one would have been probably around two centimeters in length, or at least the fossil is around that, which is gonna be a bit less than one inch. And I mean, it still is a big ant. I don't know if giant is the term I would use, but definitely a big one. And this is important because we get a lot of fossils like this from the same time period during the Eocene in North America. This time period was characterized by the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM if you hear me use it later. This was a time period of intense warming, where you need to think of things like tropical to subtropical Germany and Wyoming, or potentially even just giant drought in deserts across the equator. So depending on where you were, life was more or less fun because those environments are gonna produce very different kinds of life and successes for life. This fossil comes from the Canadian Allenby Formation, and it's actually really nice that it's from this formation, because that way we can compare it super easily to the formation that was being deposited at the same time in Wyoming, the Green River Formation, which has a ton of really, really incredible fossils, including some ants that are around this size. Now, the Allenby Formation doesn't have quite as good of preservation, so they couldn't actually name this new ant to a species, but they were able to name it to a genus, meaning it's related to some of those same ants that I mentioned from the Green River Formation. The genus in question is Titanomyrma, and there's multiple species in the Green River Formation. That's not super important for this part of it is how many species, more about the distribution of this genus. The distribution is interesting because in modern day, very large ants that are similar to Titanomyrma, they're mostly found around the equator, which kind of begs the question of, what the heck are they doing in Canada and Wyoming, which are famously not near the equator? And that's what these researchers sought to try and figure out by looking at some of the sediments in both of these locations, and especially the Allenby Formation. The environment of the Allenby Formation, based on the different rocks and isotopes that are present in those rocks, was found to be around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, or 13 degrees Celsius, throughout the year. So there would have been warmer and colder periods, depending on the time of the year, but overall it was at least somewhat warmer than it is today. And I think that's a really important aspect to understand is, while that still seems relatively cool, what it is really good at indicating is that there were at least some locations that were a little bit warmer and could have facilitated these kinds of ants to move into those environments. This means these cooler, but still not super cold places, could have served as kind of refugia for queen ants. And as they moved further and further north, they were able to cross the Bering Land Bridge into Eurasia and then move into southern parts of Asia and parts of Africa. And essentially, then once the temperatures cooled, those warm temperatures, they followed back down. And it's not like an ant in Siberia is gonna suddenly just migrate all the way back to Central America. It'll just go south towards India and Southeast Asia. So the PETM may have really facilitated our abundance of large ants around the equator. Unfortunately though, there's still some debate because like I said, the Allenby Formation isn't as good at preservation as the Green River Formation. And that means this fossil might actually be a little bit distorted or twisted or smushed or pulled out and expanded. Essentially, there's a lot of different things that could have happened to the rock and to the fossil, meaning that it might appear larger because it may have been smeared and kind of stretched and elongated as the rock was deposited. Additionally, it could have been compressed, and so it might actually need to be blown up in size to be relative to what it would have been in life. We don't exactly know all of that because you haven't looked super closely at the kind of sedimentology and also the kind of shear forces that would have been present on this rock while it was underground. That said, if we assume it actually was compressed and is larger than what the actual fossil is, its sizes line up pretty well to those Green River formation species of ants. So really it's probably that actual size or what had been that size in life. And it should be giving us a really good understanding of how the PETM actually influenced ant movement across the continents.